Always love having this guy on here on the program. And we are all, I'll speak on behalf of everyone at the NFL Network and NFL Total Access and NFL Players Only and Total Access Endgame every Thursday night football game uh, after the TNF postgame show. Speaking on behalf of everyone, thrilled that DeMarcus Ware is part of our world up there at the NFL Network and the NFL Media Group. And thrilled to have you here on the show. Good to see you, Awesome. Hey, good seeing you again. You got it. Let's get right into it. What has happened to the Broncos all of a sudden? You know what, man? I, I always look at it, especially when I played, what type of strategy we had. You know, going into their first two games, they ran the ball well with C.J. Anderson. They protected, you know, Trevor Simeon. Don't turn the ball over. They've been turning the ball over, what, almost two or three times a game, getting sacked four and five times, not protecting, you know, Simeon, and then the defense. You, they're getting pressure. They're stopping the run. But when you talk about Aqib Tlaib, when you talk about Vaughn and Wolf, where are the turnovers? Where are the turnovers like they used to get week in and week out, like uh, for the first and second week? That's not there. So they got to get back to their strategy. Well, I mean, it, it stunned me that they're coming off a bye. Right. The Giants are winless. They're without every single one of their receivers who they lost in succession, almost one per quarter the week before. Right that they come in and they pushed Denver around. And, and do you think that the Broncos came off the bye already just putting that in the win column? Do you I think, think I think uh, when you come off the bye week, those are one of those weeks where you like, okay, everybody's rested. You come off the bye week, and we're playing against the Giants. They're giving up, well, let's say, 20 sacks a game. Being funny, but they're giving up a lot of sacks a game. So talking from a pass rusher standpoint, we're going to be able to get pressure. Guess what? The Denver Broncos didn't. We're going to be able to run the ball all over their defense because they're not playing well, but they didn't. Does that happen, so, though, that you come off the bye week? It you, happens because they, sometimes you can get complacent in the mentality that you have, oh, I got this game in the bag. No, every game, every week is a new game, and you have to look at it that way. So uh, in my four-down segment that I've been doing every uh, single week, I'm going to do it, Brockman. You didn't think I was going to do it, but I'll do it. <laughs> well, I'm in Marcus, we're sitting right here. I mean, he's here. Okay, so I gave three takes for right. three downs, and then on fourth down, um, regardless of down and distance, I go for it. Hot okay. take. I hot take it. Okay. Okay. All right. So last week, I said the Cowboys are missing the playoffs. Okay. Okay. This week, I said the Broncos may not win another game the rest of the season. Okay. That's That's number two. Those are the, yeah, that's all I got. Okay, I mean, so I mean, got. I mean okay. how much time right, do you right, want? Okay, how much right, time do you right, want? All right. I mean, that's like the surface <laughs> of the sun. I mean, seriously, even Skip Bayless is embarrassed for me. I mean, so the Broncos, you look at their next three games, they're at Kansas City, at Philadelphia, home for New England. And I look at, when I think about those games, those are big games. Yes. And injuries. Emmanuel Sanders, you got Demarius Thomas. But the thing is, they still can win games if they get back to their strategy. You got to hand the ball to C.J. Anderson. I don't care what you say. You better get that run game going because when you go up there in that high altitude mm -hmm. and you play the Denver Broncos, by the second half, you're tired because we ran the ball down your throat, and that's what we do. And on defense, we played all year up here in the snow or in the high altitudes, so we use that against you. So what are you going to do? Are you going to get back to your strategy or are you going to mope around? That's what I feel about the situation. They can win. They can win those games. You said they probably won't make the playoffs or win another game. They can do it. No, I, I, I'm but, not saying that. The, I'm yeah. a, I, if, my conditional phrase, they may not win another game. They may. Okay, I like the word may. Okay, that's the yes. way I kind of couched it. <laughs> if I really wanted a hot take, it's they won't, they won't win another game. But, I, of course, I'm not going to say yes. that when they've got Cincinnati and the Jets. The Jets are visiting on December right. 10th. I mean, it could start snowing. Or, you know, and and then then they do actually they start running the ball. got to get back to the game plan, Rich. Okay. They have to. DeMarcus, we're here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do we take out of the Cowboys win then against San Francisco? What do you take out of that? Same thing again. They're coming off a of bye week. They lost two games, right? And the questions coming into the season, can Dak and Zeke play? The offensive line, are they going to be just as good, you know, losing their right tackle and their left guard and their young defense? Can they actually play? You know what? The last three games, Dak, Ezekiel, you can see they're running the ball very well. The offensive line's blocking, sort of controlling the, the trenches. And they just got back Sean Lee. And then they were worried about Jalen Smith. Can he play? Because mm -hmm. with, with Hitchens, both of those guys hurt, he came in and started playing well. And so now you can see they're starting to get their identity back, especially from the bye week and saying, hey, we can be a contender in mm -hmm. the NFC East and play well. 
because you think about Demarcus Lawrence. I don't even know where he came from. How many sacks he have right now? Well, I mean, he had that game in Arizona that he 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 kind of single handedly won that game in a way. Yeah. There was a touchdown that was yeah. taken off the board because he he drew a uh, a holding penalty on it just on a three man rush. Right. He was a he was an animal. And now you game. got David Irvin back. You know, Tyron Crawford, those guys, and and Taco. He just needs to bring it along. He and, and to do what he needs to do, and I feel like they can win games from there. But from that game, my my take from that game, mm-hmm. they've got their identity. And they can win games if they stay on the right path. Yeah, I mean they're they're first of two against the Redskins, who are three and three. I mean that is a Ooh. big, huge game yes. with the Eagles yes. again, as I mentioned, sitting there at six and one. The Cowboys right now are ninth in the conference, and they're not they're not going to win this division. So right. the question is, the path to the playoffs, they've got to be better than either the Seahawks or the Rams. And they've already lost to the Rams. Right. They've got to be better than the Packers or the Panthers. They've already lost to the Packers, but the Packers don't have Aaron Rodgers. Right. And then who knows what happens with the Lions, who are sitting right there at three and three. It's and you com- don't you don't know, and it's it's a hard door to open up. And the thing is, they can't make any mistakes during this season because you see what you're up against. You got. Philly, that's probably always won the NFC East, right? Would you, you agree got, with that? Well, I, yeah, I mean, they, they're they playing well enough to win games, even though, you know, Jason Peters and, you know, uh, Jordan Hicks, they, mm-hmm. they got hurt, but they still have a good team that can still win. And what, uh, you know, you t- talk about the game last night. It was big. Look how well they played. Even though those guys came out of the game, they played well. Well, Wentz, to me um... – you know, Wentz to me is something Where is he else. coming from? What? I mean, he, Who is this guy? Well, I mean, you could see that he's getting better with each week. And right. that when he makes a mistake, he doesn't make it again. No. That he's just, he's like adapting. <laughs> yes. Like he's like this being that is an adaptive being. Yes. That like is a slot getting, machine. Eventually, if you keep pressing and pressing it, it's 777 <laughs> and he hits the jackpot. And then suddenly it's no longer just cherries. <laughs> right. No, but so so I think he is that good. Um, but then there's Brady sitting there in the AFC. Right. Who do you think is the best team in the AFC through seven weeks to Marcus Ware? You think the so? best team in the AFC, I would say the Patriots. I still think, I, you think about the Kansas City Chiefs, how well they're playing, but can they play well like that the whole season, the rest of the season? Mm-hmm. And now you think about the Patriots, they're coming in. You know, Brady's been playing lots out. MVP, elite status, been doing what he needs to do. But then their defense struggled at the beginning of the season. And all of a sudden now Matt Patricia comes in and he says, can we play well? Mm-hmm. Can we have a turnaround? That's what championship teams, that's what they do. And you can see the last – two or three games, they're starting to play well. They're starting to get their identity. They're starting to buy in. Buy in to, you know what, we're still that championship caliber team. And you can see when, you know, the Patriots, you know, they play Kansas City. They can win games. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they're still the team to beat if they play that type of mentality game. What about the Steelers? What do you think about, Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, same same thing. Just on the flip side, the offense didn't start well with the Killer Bees, with Brown, Bell. And uh, Ben Roethlisberger, you know what, Tomlin comes in and he says, hey, what, I'm going to put my finger on you guys and make sure that we give the ball to Bell that's going to move the chains, take the pressure off of Ben, and give it to my playmaker, Brown. And you can see now that their offense have had a big turnaround, and they're still curtain defense. It's playing now. That They're playing. And now you're also seeing, DeMarcus, we're here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, you're also seeing that part of the season now where – uh, the cracks in the armor are becoming mm. public. You're hearing some members of the Buccaneers, like T.J. Ward, right. say that I didn't come here to be a backup. Right. Um, then you see T.Y. Hilton for two and five, mm. Indianapolis, start to say the offensive line needs to account for itself. What happens in a locker room where the losing begins to creep in and the season begins to get, you know, late, fast? I think it's all about the mentality that you take if you are going into a losing season. You can go in and say, you know, this or here is what we have, Mm -hmm. and I want to spoil the game for each one of these teams, even though I'm not going to make it. Because I'm playing for the guy beside me because we work our butts off this whole off season and during the season right now to get to where we are. Or you can be that bad apple and say, you know what, I'm not getting the ball. Uh, We're not playing well. There's always a 
a way to point the finger at somebody else. But why don't you point it at yourself? Well, Martavis Bryant right now for five and two Pittsburgh is saying that that he needs to get the ball more or he's not going to stand for his role in the offense anymore. If you're in that locker room with somebody saying that, okay, all right, walk me through it. If you if you sit right here, I'm just saying using it as an example mm-hmm. with Tyreek Hill. Some games he's a decoy. He doesn't get the ball, but Kareem Hunt, Alex Smith, they ball out. It's a team sport. But if that happens in the locker room and I get a guy that comes in and says, I'm not getting the ball, I would ask him, are you open? Are you open? Are, are, you, are you a team player? I mean, being a captain. And I would grind him in his face and let him know that this team <laughs> is bigger than you because you are just a player. And if you can't be on this team and you want to be an individual, get out of the locker room. I would look at him straight in his face and say, get out of the locker room. If you were in Pittsburgh right now. If so. I was in Pittsburgh right now, get it out of the locker room. And guess what? I'll have the whole team behind my back. Because mm-hmm. I work my butt off. We worked our butts off to get to this point. Yes. And if you don't want to be part of this, get out. And I don't then, care who you are. And then I'll see you on Facebook Live because Antonio Brown is putting that on live social media. He puts it on social media. <laughs> That's fine. I'll watch it live. Let's take a break. I want to take a quick break. Uh, discuss what you're doing tomorrow, okay, in your personal life. <laughs> I want to hit on that because you're beginning to do some singing, correct? Yes, okay. yes, yes, well, yes. I want to hit that. And then also back on the football field, um, what you think is happening in a Seattle locker room where, yes, they are winning, but the offense and the defense are definitely on different – levels of success and right. efficiency right now right i want to hit that next with demarcus Ware, method man waiting in the wings <laughs> that's how we're rolling here on this very busy tuesday edition of the rich eisen show all right a couple minutes while the radio audience goes away demarcus Ware here you know we were talking about on the uh on the network a few weeks ago when um uh, about the game where aaron Rodgers came in for the injured Favre in Dallas on a Thursday night in the old Texas stadium. And we mm-hmm. were there as an, as yes. a network. Cause I think you guys were undefeated and Favre had only one loss or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it was Romo versus Favre. Right. And Romo grew up with Favre's <laughs> poster on it. Right. And Favre got hurt right. and Rogers came in. And I remember we were all sitting there going, Oh, wait a minute. Were you like that on the field too? Or did you get hurt I just, in that game too? I, I think I got hurt that game as well. I remember that, but it was, one of those things where you're thinking like, oh, I mean, is Romo going to be that guy? But then I'm like, I practice against him all the time, and he crushes us. Mm-hmm. He'll be okay. Mm-hmm. And that's when the birth of Romo happened. That was a big game that Oh, night. yeah. I remember that. That was a big game. But I remember Aaron Rodgers coming in, and we were all like, huh, this guy can play too. And we were giving Mooch grief like, oh, your boy Favre, look, look over right. his shoulder. You right. know. But, but the thing is, like, you can see – that that happens week in and week out. You can see with Romo, there's that. With, you know, when Bledsoe was in the game, mm-hmm. there was Romo, right? That's right. There was Bledsoe in with the Patriots, there was Brady. Brady. Yeah. So it happens in the league. And uh, do you think Romo got a call from the Packers? I think he got a call from the Packers. Yeah, I think I think he Do you know if he got a call from I don't the know if he got a call from the Packers, but I know Look the at that teams, smile. They Look do at that call. Smile. They do call and still want you to do some Is things. Right? Yeah, I mean, okay. I still get calls. Oh! Yeah. yeah. I, still, I still get calls. You st- Today, even to this very day, you yeah. still get calls. To this very day. DeMarcus, can we uh, huh. get you to rush the passer? <laughs> and? And? No, I'm not rushing You're the passer done. anymore. I'm done. I'm done. But people still want to know. They still want to know. I'm telling you, everybody gets calls. If So Romo got a call. You got a call. For that sure. makes sense. You're a Hall of Famer. Cutler got a phone call. Ooh. Cutler got a phone call. Did somebody call, call you? Nobody's calling No? Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> DeMarcus Ware here uh, on the show. Before we hit the two subjects that we want to hit that I teased, you mentioned in the television-only segment, when I asked if you thought Romo got a call from the Packers, you said you thought he did. Then you started smiling, saying that you got a phone call. Yeah. You have gotten a phone call. This morning. Today. Today, like 15 minutes ago. 
before you walked in here, yeah, asking if you want to return to the NFL. In if week, I want to return to eight. the NFL, this is the time to where teams want pass rushers, and pass rushers, you know, they get hurt during the season. So let me just walk through this real quick. Okay, because I know you're not going to tell me which team it is. No. Okay, even if it rhymes with Schmenver or Schmalis. Okay. <laughs> right. um, does this team assume you would say yes and thus you'd be on the field this coming Sunday? Would they that would, be the assumption? They would assume, yes. They would assume me being ready for this game Sunday to rush the passer, you know, at least 15 times in the game. So the hope was they call you DeMarcus Ware on your phone and you go, yes. you know what? I've enjoyed the NFL network thing and I know that that will be there when I'm done, but I do miss the game so much. Yes, I will play for you this Sunday for X amount of dollars for the rest of the and season. That was exactly, their hope. That's exactly their hope, but you know what? I'll do whatever I can to help the team. You know, not myself. I'm not getting out there. I'm not playing anymore. I'm done. But Whatever I can do to help the team, I'm there 100. percent So Freeney must have gotten a call this season too, don't you think? You know right? Freeney. I got would a call. imagine. You know Freeney got a call, and he's said no. I don't know if he said no or not. Maybe he's working through contractual things, hmm. but I don't know. He might come week 10, like week 10. But did you think about it for a second, or I got? I thought about it. I thought about right putting the pads back on and really smashing some guy's head. Be honest with you. I'm being honest with you right now. But hmm. I changed my mind. I went back into my Zen, the Bruce Banner mode, not Incredible Hulk. Yes. And uh, put my glasses on and say, you know what? No, I'm going to talk about, you know, football and just enjoy life. With How long family. did it take for you to get the Bruce Bannon back on? How the long? Bruce Banner? Yeah, yeah, Bruce Banner. How long I mean, did, if did you wanted Bannon? to put on like a quarterback jersey right yeah. now, uh -huh. and one of you, one of you guys snapped the ball, yeah. I mean, I can actually like turn into my very fast. I, I, that I don't doubt. You have, you, you have green on right now, by the way. <laughs> 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 so you think I'm playing for the Eagles? You think yes. I'm Wentz? I'm not very Wentz-like. Uh, wow. Okay. Demarcus Weir here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, the Seahawks defense balling out. The offense seems to constantly be three and outing them back on the field in situations where they have to keep it one possession game all the time. Yes. For the for the for either the offense to come back or keep it right where it is so the offense already up one possession can add to it. What's happening in that locker room, do you think? From a defensive standpoint, the offense almost have to give the defense a little bit of credit. Don't go nonchalantly uh, not recognizing what we're doing. If the offense comes to the defense and say, hey, I know we're not playing well. We're not going to lose the game for you. We're not going to turn the ball over. We're going to control the clock. And we're going to wait for you guys to get turnovers. We're going to wait for you guys to get interceptions, make big plays, give us short field, and we're going to score points. That's the strategy we need to have for the rest of the season because you know that we have a bad offensive line that's not, you know, protecting me right now. I'm talking from a Wilson standpoint, uh -huh. right? We, I know we're not running the ball as effective and we're keeping you guys on the field the whole time. I thank you for that, but this is what we need to do to win games instead of it being a separated thing to where it's an offense and defense deal hmm. To where, you know what, ah, the offense not playing well, we got to pick up the pieces. No, it's still a team sport. Let's let's come together, let's figure this out. We know what we're not good at, and let's still win games. Last minute I have for you left. Who are you hanging with again tomorrow? Who, who, you, who am I hanging with? Yeah, who are you hanging with tomorrow? Uh, Drop Snoop. Name. Snoop Dogg tomorrow. Yeah. You're, you're singing with him? Singing with him, yes. What? what it's a deal with the, uh, with the NFL. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Superheroes. And what it, what it is, it's uh, to raise awareness for... Uh, with my with my daughter's situation, it's with ADD, mm -hmm. right? It's a big epidemic um, around, and you know my kids actually going to be on there too, so okay. it's going to be fun, and it's a good way to just raise awareness and um, and just make things make the world a better place, man. With all the stuff going on. So how you how how so you're going to rap? You're gonna oh, I'm, I'm not rapping at all. I might, I might sing a little bit. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to at least sing a note. Or something on the stage right now. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I feel it. Do I feel you, it. I feel it well, boiling right now. I, I feel like you want to. No, I'm, no, I don't. But uh, yeah. and I'm not rapping, so we're good. I, yeah. feel, I feel like you'd really like to sing. It show <laughs> off do. how you'd want to sing. I do. I that do you're like really to good. Sing, that you're really we'll good. Wait. Sounds like we'll you really want later. to do. It. We'll wait till later. <laughs> Demarcus Ware here on the Rich Eisen Show. Mere seconds after telling the Dallas Cowboys, "Thanks, but no thanks." Oh, you see, you trying to throw a name out there? No, I'm just trying to blow no. darts. He's trying his best to try to get to figure out who it was. Method nah. Man here in hour number three on the Rich Eisen Show. 
For more Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Rich Eisen Show app.